everyone. We hope you are enjoying your NRF experience so far, and we thank you for joining our Big Ideas session brought to you by Cisco Meraki. Over the next 20 minutes, we are going to discuss how you can take the Meraki ecosystem and add a stellar partner and come up with amazing customized solutions that keep your customers safe, but also keep them engaged in your retail stores. I'm your host, Steve Moulter, and I'm really excited to bring up two fantastic leaders to discuss how they are working together to solve for our new normal in retail. The solutions you'll hear about in the next few minutes are truly transformative, both for the customer and also for the retailers and employees. We're very lucky to have Raj Krishna and Gavin Wielden with us to dive into these stories, to give us a glimpse into the future. So Raj, I wanna give a welcome to you. And Gavin, again, thank you for helping to keep our customers safe. So Raj currently leads strategy at the Cloud Networking Group of Cisco Meraki as Vice President of Strategy and Planning. Gavin is CEO of Purple, a premier technology partner helping retail venues optimize safety and enhance the customer experience and drive revenue. By connecting multiple data sources like Wi-Fi sensors, DLE beacons, POS, CCTV to a cloud-based platform, businesses get a holistic view of exactly what is happening in their spaces. And what I really love about this partnership is that Purple works seamlessly with Meraki's platform. It is a software overlay that can be enabled within minutes. And both platforms being so easy to use has then contributed to joint success of over 166 million users at notable customers like L'Oreal, Legoland, and McDonald's. So let's jump into this great retail story. And Gavin, I wanna begin with you. Tell us a little bit more about Purple, maybe even a customer success story or two. Sure thing, Steve. So I guess a, a helicopter view of what Purple do, we help spaces improve safety, create experiences for the, for the people that use them, and ultimately drive reward through either operational improvements or direct revenue um, increments. Um, and as you say, we do that for notable customers. You know, you mentioned L'Oreal, we've got Under Armour, Michael Kors, Walmart, and, and many others around the globe. Um, and, and we do that using, you know, standard technology like Wi Fi and cameras or cameras as we like to call them, sensors, because we're not interested in the people that are in the images. It's the data that comes from it, the stats that come from it. And ultimately what we're there for is to create intelligent spaces, to make the spaces as intelligent offline, if you like, in the real world, as an e-commerce site is online. So to bring them digital smarts into the physical world. And a, a great example, a joint customer we've got is, is McDonald's, and we've currently got them across four countries. And for the for the IT folk in our virtual crowd, um, the, the sort of headline there, you talked about the simplicity. Obviously, Meraki and Purple are both cloud infrastructure. So literally, you can light up hundreds, if not thousands of venues within a couple of clicks and literally within minutes. And because they then synchronize afterwards, the maintenance is, is negligible. And for McDonald's, that meant a 90 percent reduction in on-site visits to store. So. You know, I, I could stop there and say, there's the ROI. Isn't that great? You know, the, 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 the benefits there are, are innumerable, but that, that is really just the start of the journey. So because that onboarding journey for the end user is so scalable, it's so simple, it's so stable, that also meant a 350% increase in the number of logins to the guest Wi-Fi within McDonald's. And, and that's important on, on many different planes. So simple one, experience. If you think prior to that, how many people were frustrated by the experience of trying to get on the Wi-Fi and they aren't anymore? So that's straight away ticking the box. Um, but you know, loyalty, loyalty is a big thing in retail as it is in many of the other industries. And we integrate with McDonald's loyalty system. So as part of that onboarding journey, we can quickly check if you are already a loyalty member. If you're not, we can prompt you to join. And that has driven literally a, a, a rocketing in the number of loyalty members and app downloads. 
So a real shot in the arm for the loyalty program. And, and the other thing, you know, a lot of people will have loyalty programs who are listening. And often a problem with loyalty is that it's not used. So people come in, they're a loyalty member, but they don't use it. So we know the second you walk in that door because the Wi-Fi picks you up, we know you're a loyalty member and you can be prompted to use that loyalty card or you know app or whatever it might be to really drive the usage as well. And and you know, for the customers that have got loyalty, amazing, real shot in the arm, as I say. But our, our smaller and mid-market customers, they also use the Wi-Fi itself as the loyalty program. So within our platform, you can set up a number of flows or triggers. So if you've been 10 times, you've well for more than X minutes, well, here's a free coffee in the restaurant or 10% off if you spend over X amount of pounds today. So they can leverage it for that as well. But I, th I think one of the, the most powerful things is, is insights. You know, it's, it's understanding. So suddenly now, McDonald's, they know who's coming, they know how often, how long they stay, where they've come from. You know, if there's a bounce rate, you know, bounce is something that you look at all the time on e-commerce because that usually means a bad page. So if you've got a high bounce rate in a store, well, what does that mean? Is it, you know, the queues are inefficient? Is it something else? It gives you a reason then to look at that store and say, what's going on there? So all of those same metrics that McDonald's measure on a digital property, they now can measure in a physical property. So many great capabilities here. And already we can begin to see why Purple is a real market leader in delivering intelligent space solutions. Raj, I want to bring you into the conversation here. What makes the Meraki solution so exciting for partners like Purple? Certainly, Steve. I would, I would love to talk about that. Just a brief note on what Meraki is. Meraki is a cloud-managed portfolio of networking devices. We were a startup based out of the Bay Area, acquired by Cisco, and we continue to be one of the fastest growing parts of Cisco. Today, we have a very rich portfolio of Wi-Fi access points, Ethernet switches, SD-WAN security appliances, and now more recently we've branched out and we've diversified and we've also added video surveillance cameras and now physical sensor monitors. So a really exciting growth of the portfolio. And a few years ago we noticed this trend in the market where people wanted to be able to build customizable applications on top of the network. They wanted to be able to configure things and they wanted to be able to extract data so that they could build logging applications, so that they could build configuration third-party tools. So a few years ago, we made a strategic bet to say, look, all of our products are going to be very open. We're going to build a very rich set of APIs. And we did that a few years ago, and we built out the Meraki development ecosystem. And Purple was actually one of our first ever partners in that journey, and they've been an incredible partner for us over the last several years. And it's been amazing to see their evolution, uh, starting from kind of splash Wi-Fi engagement experiences to today, very intelligent space solutions that can be used uh, for very next-gen type of use cases to understand what's happening on a physical property. So it's been it's been an amazing journey to build this platform, build the openness of the platform, see this development ecosystem spread and foster. And now we have more than 100 application developers that are building on top of the Meraki platform, building customized applications, everything ranging from logging to analytics to understanding physical spaces. We have one partner, Every Angle, that's built a very nice solution on top of our cameras in order to be able to tell facilities owners and, and specifically medical staff whether the person in the image is wearing PPE, personally protective equipment, key, key use case in this uh, current environment with the pandemic raging. So we have this rich portfolio of products. We have this rich set of APIs. We have fantastic partners that can build on top of the platform like Purple. And we've now built out the Meraki marketplace and application ecosystem apps.meraki.io if you want to go there and you want to search for all the applications that we have available from third-party developers. Great background on Meraki, and we're going to come back to that uh, website a little bit later as well. Meraki is really impressive, and it's so much more than just a cloud networking solution. There are loads of possible applications for retail. So Gavin, what are some other ways that Purple and Meraki are teaming up to help keep customers safer? Um, Raj touched on it a moment ago, but I'd love to hear from you. Sure thing. So all of our use cases fit in one of three main buckets, safety, experience, and reward. And unsurprisingly, in the times that we live in, safety has come to the fore with both our customers and our prospects. Um, and Raj touched on, the, on the, obviously, the cameras, or as we refer to them as sensors, and they are unbelievably accurate people counters. So if you want to know how many people are in a building, a floor, or a zone, you know, a, a room like the, you know, the, the uh, washrooms, 
then this is an absolutely great way of leveraging existing technology to achieve that. And, you know, even pre-COVID or post-COVID, you know, that's powerful because understanding store performance, understanding when to put staff on at busier times, you know, there's a simple things like cleaning based on usage rather than every 30 minutes is, is just really sensible. But obviously with COVID, safety has come to the fore. And I think, you know, if, if you look forward, you know, this will probably become a consumer segmentation, the sort of risk appetite of consumers. And, and right now, I think retailers have got two, two key challenges. One is to get people to feel safe enough to come to the store. And then when they're at the store to feel safe enough to come back again. So how can you know how are we using those sensors to help them achieve that? So the, the first thing is to externalize some of that data. So if you know how many people are in a, a store at a given time, why not make that visible? And a, a simple way is we've got something called the display app. So you can put that on a you know a tablet, a, a screen, a kiosk, or you know, can connect with Bluetooth to traffic light systems or LED strips. So you've got a visual cue for people, it's safe to come in, or here's the occupancy currently, you can come in. And you've probably seen it with people stood on the doors with clickers and notepads and, you know, calculators. It, it's crazy, you know, when you can do that with a, a simple piece of technology and also make those consumers feel safe. But if you then expose that on the website or in an app, if, if I'm a consumer, I'm sat at home, I'm on the lower end of that risk profile, I can see that my local store is actually quite busy, but the one three miles away is at 30% occupancy. So I'd rather drive that little bit further to somewhere where I can feel safe, and that's going to encourage me to come out. And if I want to plan ahead, well, I can see the historic occupancy. So I can see that Thursday morning between 10 and 11 is actually really quiet. And for me and my risk profile, that's when I want to go. And that also has a, a, a natural additional benefit of, of natural distribution of people because I've got one store over here really busy and another one over here really quiet. Well, surely if I can, you know, distribute people a little bit, bit more equally, that's good for everybody. So I think exposing that data to those consumers and giving them the choice really makes a big difference and, and we've had one of our customers take that even further with the wi-fi so obviously we know who who's been and we know how long they've stayed and we're able to trigger what we call micro surveys post visit so an hour later three hours later 24 hours later you get a, a micro survey with a few questions for feedback and they were asking specifically around you know did you feel safe was it cleanly was social distancing being adhered to and the feedback they got particularly and i won't say who this is um, that on social distancing wasn't what they wanted to hear or what they believed or what the data was telling them. But as I say, perception is reality. So even if the data was saying social distancing was fine, the perception was not. So they made some operational changes and within four weeks, they were scoring five star on that metric. So that if they hadn't had that feedback loop and that data, they wouldn't have made those changes. The people that come, they don't say ring up and say, hey, the social distancing wasn't great. Can you fix it? They just don't come again, you know. So this is the opportunity to get that data, use it, make changes, and improve that perception for the customers. And and we're, we're, sensors are really exciting for us. And Raj, I know uh, you made a rather exciting acquisition earlier this year, and we're looking forward to getting our hands on some new toys. So Raj, Gavin just mentioned this new acquisition from Iraqi, which is very exciting. Why don't you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, it is, it is really exciting, the recent acquisition that we just made. It's the first acquisition that the Meraki business unit within Cisco has ever made. It's ModCam. It's a, it's a company, it's a computer vision company based out of Sweden. And what they do is they have this very intelligent technology that stitches together data from multiple cameras to paint essentially a three-dimensional view of what's happening in the physical space. They can paint heat maps, they can tell you the flow of, of traffic through a store. And our plan is to integrate this technology and push out all this data and all these data sets through APIs so that third party developers uh, can can build more intelligent and richer applications on top. So this is just us continuing our investments in that physical spaces arena, which is becoming so important right now, especially with a return to office uh, world that we're all living in. This is fascinating. And these are unique perspectives that we're not getting a great deal of the time. So I'm so glad that we're getting them here. When we look at 
the world of retail today, this really interesting environment that we are all living through, these efforts are literally enabling retailers to stay operational. So on behalf of all of those companies and their customers, thank you both. What I want to do now is talk a little strategy, get your takes on how retailers can continue to evolve in this ever-changing environment. And Gavin, let's stay with you and then we'll have Raj follow suit on this. How do we keep this evolution moving forward? Okay, so when we talk strategy, I guess I'd, I'd like to phrase it in, in terms of the problem. And, you know, we, we've used many words over the years for what we, we see as, as the problem. And I went to a Gartner conference a couple of years ago, and the closing speech was digital dragons here to eat your lunch, roughly. And it was it was talking about your, your Googles and your Facebooks and your Tencents and your Baidus. And the first slide showed each of them and all the companies they own and all the industries they're in. And it was one of the moments you sit back and go, whew, didn't know that. And, and the whole message of that presentation was they're coming into your industry and retail is absolutely prime. And if you think about those types of company, you know, digital and data and insights and automation and personalization, it runs through their blood. You know, that is what they do. It is the core of the being, you know, and, and that is coming into your world, our world. And we need to be prepared. And, and our strategies are all, all about helping those people survive and thrive to, you know, the, the, the saying, don't take a knife to a gunfight. Well, you know, this is this is data. You need to get data right. It needs to be at the core of the business. And that's what we do as a business. And everything we do and we think about is thinking about how we level that playing field, how we help those physical spaces be able to compete in the same way that the digital natives do. That's great. Raj, why don't you pick up on where Gavin left right. off there and talk about from your strategic standpoint? Certainly, yes. So I think uh, I'm going to echo a lot of what Gavin said. I think the ability to leverage the best-in-class digital technologies and architectures to enhance your physical in-store experience. So I think that starts with creating a foundational networking layer, putting in the best in class Wi-Fi and security into your stores so that they're connected, so that they're online, so that your employees and guests are having productive experiences. And then going beyond that and creating omni-channel experiences where you're able to actually use the best of digital as well as use the, the best of physical. We have retail customers in the United States that have deployed Meraki into their stores at scale and now what they're doing is they're creating digital experiences in the store and they're tying those back to the digital online experiences that their customers have on their e-commerce website. So there's a lot of ways you can differentiate. And actually, I think physical in-store spaces, retailers can, can use the best of in-store as well as use the best of digital e-commerce and surpass even the digital dragons that they play their cards, right, of course. And I think building a strong networking platform is 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 front and center to that. And then building on top of that interactive, engaging, intelligent experiences for the for the customers that are coming in, as well as for the employees themselves to, to help keep them safe and to help understand which of your stores are the highest performing stores or the lowest performing stores. So the idea is be digital, put the networking infrastructure in place, and then build those applications on top and use open, easy, extensible platforms like Meraki to do that, as well as use turnkey solutions like Purple in order to build in those analytics um, so that you can take your retail experience to the next level. Perfectly put, great perspective there. As we start to close things out on our session here, I wanna kind of break out our crystal balls and give each of you an opportunity to talk about what is coming next, what our future looks like. So if you just had one piece of advice to give for top initiatives in 2021, what would it be? And Raj, this time I wanna start with you. Certainly, yes. I think for, for 2021, uh, the name of the game is going to be kind of a, a return to normal, kind of a post-pandemic world and being very thoughtful and methodical and safe and data-driven about how we do that, right? So again, making sure that as we return to this, to this physical world, that we're doing it in a way where we are analyzing the data from these spaces, that we're putting in place good, cohesive, long-term strategies, and we're also making it safe to return to work for our employees, for our customers, and getting the most out of our infrastructures and in supporting this experience. Absolutely. Gavin, how about you? Well, I'd say I'd much prefer going first so that Raj doesn't steal my words. So I'll say <laughs> I echo everything. I agree with, with Raj 100%. I guess I'd, you know, let, let's assume you, you've achieved all that. I think that the sort of next 
evolution, if you like, is thinking about that experiences. You know, if, if a retail experience isn't experiential, then you've just got a very expensive distribution method. So thinking about that experience and, you know, it's part art, it's part science and, and where we come in is the science bit. You know, we, we don't help with the, the art bit. So I would echo it's data, data, data. Let's understand what's happening. Let's communicate with the customers, because if you start with that, then you, you can map a path forward. So for us, it's, it's about, you know, connecting more data, you know, seeing how that data evolves into automated actions. But I guess in, in terms of advice, you know, I'd say if experience is going to be so key, how, how do you measure that? You know, there, there's the obvious, there's the return rate, there's frequency, there's recency, there's dwell. And you can get all of those measurements from Purple and, and Meraki, and that's great. But, you know, is, is there something new? And, you know, something we're thinking about a lot is, you know, smiles per hour. You know, if you think about the, the, the cameras and sentiment analysis, you know, is a measure smiles per hour? Who knows? Really good food for thought, and again, a unique way of putting it, which I uh, which I definitely do appreciate. Survive and thrive, that is mine. Uh, when I think of, of where we actually end 2020 and move into 2021, survive and thrive is what pops into my mind. This has been great and a really informative conversation. I had a great time. Um, I'm really thankful for the information, for the insights that we just got here on Cisco Meraki, on Purple, how we are partnering in so many great ways to keep retail spaces safe and keep engaging customers. On behalf of all of us who are watching the program here, Gavin, Raj, I want to thank both of you guys for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. And of course, our thanks go out to all of you for taking the time to join us here at Cisco Meraki's Big Ideas session. You can see amazing partners like Purple and find your own customized retail solution at at.meraki.io. We hope that you will continue to engage with us in the upcoming Big Ideas sessions. Check your event app for those times and add those into your calendar. Creating new transformation retail experiences, it does not mean compromising safety or customer engagement. Meraki's cloud-based platform is designed for ease of use. It enables you to modernize and to simplify and to secure the retail experience. On behalf of Gavin, Raj, everybody on the Cisco Meraki team, I'm Steve Malter. Thanks, everyone.